She is a keen recorder and is on the steering group of Carmarthenshire Meadows Group. Today, Laura is going to tell us about Big Meadows Search, a recording project she initiated at the Meadows Group. So thank you, Laura. Thanks, thanks, Kate. I'll just try and get my screen sorted. Uh. Okay, so I feel I've got a very tough act to follow, so hopefully I can keep you engaged with plants rather than uh, sexy lizards. Um, but as Kate says, I'm going to be talking with my Carmarthenshire Meadows hat on rather than a WW Bic hat on this morning. So the Big Meadows search um, got underway spring of last year when we had a committee meeting and we decided it would be very interesting to find out what plant species we had amongst our uh, meadows. And we thought it would be good to take a broad approach and look at all of our um, plant species rather than um, doing a very focused quadrate, quadrat based uh, survey. So with this in mind, we set about compiling a Big Meadows Search uh, species list. So this was derived from the National Plant Monitoring uh, Scheme uh, Positive and Negative Indicator Species for Lowland Grassland. And alongside that, Richard Price, our county plant recorder, very kindly suggested some other meadow axiophyte species that we should also try and uh, look out for. We plan to run the project over two separate weeks, the first to coincide with Wales Nature Week and the second uh, coinciding with the National Meadows Day. As with all good plans, um, we decided to make some amendments as we were going along and we wanted to be uh, a more inclusive project. So we um, extended the invitation to take part to anybody in the UK. And rather than just focusing on hay meadows, we wanted to extend the reach to other forms of species rich uh, grassland. As well as the two um, tick lists, we also were keen for people to let us know of any additional species that they spotted whilst they were out on their um, searches. And due to the growing interest as the project was running, rather than having those two separate weeks, we decided to have a continuous search period, which ended um, on the uh, 31st of July. To promote the project, we used um, Facebook and Twitter, and uh, through the course of the summer, featured 90 of the BMS uh, plant species, and um, tried to sort of engage people, learning about um, how to identify plants, uh, little snippets of information about colloquial names and folklore, and particularly highlighting the importance of plants and their interactions with other species. And we signposted people to various um, identification resources uh, along the way. So here's just um, some examples of some posts that we put out on Twitter. So just a couple here for hedge uh, bed straw and tufted hair grass. So the photographs were of the ID features and also we tried to um, put links to invertebrate species that uh, utilise the plants. And here's the same um, sort of thing for um, Facebook. I'd never used Twitter before um, starting this project and I have to say I was um, pleasantly small. I posted this after the project had finished in August um, I, for one, hadn't really noticed the lovely detail on meadow sweet fruits before this time and just put a simple post up just um, demonstrating that. And I was very surprised to see that it reached nearly 12,000 people across uh, five continents. So it just shows how powerful social media can be at getting messages out there. Uh, here are some other um, demonstrations of the types of posts that were put up. So. We've got uh, weevil uh, larval cases there at the top left. We've got the green dot beetle at various stages, bottom right. Some grassland fungi, uh, ergot fungus, and also we tried to do some botanical terms. So that's a super hydrophobic um, uh, leaf surfaces on that top right picture. 
So the outcomes throughout the project, we received informal feedback as we were going along, and we also did a survey monkey just to try and get some um, feedback from people who had actually been out and about and doing the searches. And the themes that emerged were that people were becoming more aware of grasslands um, in all sorts of different places, churchyards, road verges, amenity grounds, woodland rides, etc. And they're reporting an increased appreciation and understanding of the importance of those uh, grasslands. Many people said that their identification skills were improving, mine included. And um, one thing that very much came out towards the end of the project was the appreciation of the posts with the invertebrate plant interactions. And when we set out, we thought that the main objective was going to be data collection, but it was nice to have these other things emerging as we went along. So from last year, this is the preliminary data we've got so far. So we had 76 locations across 14 counties. We had 327 species and nearly 2,600 records were submitted. Of the um, NPMS species tick list, 85% of those were found. And of the additional meadow species that were uh, suggested um, by our county recorder, we had 72% uh, of those recorded. So looking at the NPMS species that weren't uh, recorded um, during the summer, you can see them all listed here. Somebody did report drop works, but actually when I contacted them, that turned out to be a misidentification of meadow sweet. And um, you'll see bird's foot there, um, and that did cause some problems. Bird's foot is one of the indicator species on the MPMS list, but many people confuse this with common bird's foot trefoil. So I contacted everybody that did record it and everybody had actually mis, um, misread what it was and nobody um, had found bird's foot. They were all common bird's foot trefoil records. Of the meadow axiphyte list, there were 17 species that weren't recorded. And as you can see there, six of them were rushes and sedges. And there's a smattering of other different um, interesting species that are yet to be found within the BMS. And what we must remember that things not being found doesn't mean that the site doesn't have them. So obviously positive records, we can say that they were there, they're correctly identified. But if we don't find them, that doesn't necessarily mean that the site doesn't have uh, species present. So the map here shows the distribution of those 76 sites. So they extended up to Newcastle upon Tyne and down to Totnes, and most of the sites were within the West Wales region. And if we look at Wales in more detail, uh, the green lines there are the boundaries of the four lurks, and as you can see, most of them are within the WW Bic region, with a few around the edges of Subrec and Biz, and just one in the Covnog region. So, as I mentioned, the project evolved as it went along. So we started very local, just expecting the members of the Carmarthenshire Meadows group but extended it UK wide, although, as you saw, not many sites were searched in England and Scotland. Um, we started with meadows, um, but now accept any species rich grassland. And although we initially planned to get records for WW Bic, things have obviously changed. Just going back to my earlier points, we definitely seem to be raising the appreciation and interest in grasslands. We're highlighting the associations between plants and other species, improving plant um, ID skills and generating records now for multiple lurks. One thing I came across during reading for this project was a, a phenomenon called plant awareness disparity, which has also been called plant blindness in the past. That's generally human's tendency not to notice plants. So when we're out and about, people say that we're looking up, we don't often look down and therefore plants are often over, overlooked. And the scientist um, Kate Parsley split this condition into four different uh, themes. One is that people don't notice plants to start with, they're not particularly bothered about plants, they don't care for them, they don't appreciate their importance and don't find them as interesting as other organisms. So the lessons we've learned, it was nice that we had quite a number of uh, beginners that wanted to take part in the um, project, which was great. 
The data collection tool that we designed was essentially an Excel spreadsheet, which in hindsight was a bit clunky um, and not very analyst friendly. We also had um, Word document lists of species submitted and even photographs of handwritten notes that were emailed to me, but it was all useful data. We didn't require photographic uh, submissions alongside the records, which you could argue is a problem for verification. But if you look at other big schemes like the Big Garden Bird Watch, the uh, Butterfly Count, and other um, UK wide schemes, citizen science, very few of them require photographs to be submitted. We did offer for, patient, uh, for people to um, submit photos, but to date, nobody's taken us up on that offer. And there's definitely a phobia when it comes to looking at grasses and sedges. So with that in mind, I, I am trying to put out posts that cover the grasses, rushes and sedges to try and improve people's confidence to go out there and, and start to take a, take a look. So what are the plans for now and beyond? So I'm currently looking at the Axivite list we used last year, which had a Carmarthenshire bias because it was set up when we initially just planned to be a single county project. We're looking to increase the number of participants and the UK coverage and hoping to do some short identification videos uh, to put up on the YouTube station. And we're currently developing a website so that we can hopefully have all the background information um, in one place and also to have an online data uh, submission uh, site. And it might also be helpful to highlight the uh, species that are a bit tricky to identify or, or um, have similar looking species. So rather than wait to the summer to try and get people on board, I've been doing um, regular posts on Twitter and uh, Facebook over the last month or so looking at vegetative ID, and this just shows a range of four posts that just covered uh, bramble. So we've got just the vegetative ID at top left, then just highlighting some moth species that use it as a larval uh, food plant, uh, some field signs with uh, leaf mines, and also an unusual colour variant there at the bottom uh, right. So what's happening next? I'm still analysing the data and once all that's complete, the records will be submitted to each relevant uh, UK LERC. And then for this year, the project's going to be running for a longer period between the beginning of June and the end of August. We're going to do the same thing and have any species rich grassland um, being included. And basically, we'd like people to go out, pick a grassland, just take a and amble along, enjoy what you're doing, search for the plants and make a list, and then to submit that list to the Big Meadow Search. And by then, hopefully, it will be an online uh, process, which will make it a lot easier. So that's a summary of what we've been doing and where we're hopefully heading. So if you have any questions or would like to get in touch, um, then these are our three uh, groups of contact. And I hope this has been of interest and that some of you would like to take part going forward. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you, Laura. It's a great little project and um, we look forward to seeing it grow. And I think um, you should be applauded for the for the amount of work from from that. You can clearly see the amount of work that you've put into it. So so well done. Thank you.